Hello everyone, my name is Yao Hiao. I work in the assessment office at University of Hawaii at Manoa. Today I will be talking about starting with the end in mind, defining outcomes. In the curriculum development method, backward design, it says that when we develop a course or a project, we need to start thinking about what we expect out of the students first. What are the learning outcomes or learning goals? And then we start thinking about what tasks that we can use for students to demonstrate their achievement of the outcomes. Then we think about what are the learning op uh, activities, opportunities, materials to use, themes to use, pedagogical approaches. But we always should start with by thinking about what are the learning outcomes we expect out of our students first. What are learning outcomes? I define learning outcome as an action-oriented statement of the knowledge, skills, or dispositions that students are expected to know, to be able to do, or value upon successful course completion, and in our case would be project completion. There are three components of a SLO. It almost always start with the phrase, students will be able to, or students can, followed by an action verb or action verbs such as list, describe, analyze. More verbs, you can find more verbs through this link that I provide in more to consider. The third component is a learning domain or learning domains that can be classified into content domain and language domain in PBLL. Let me give you an example. In this example, you can see it start with students will be able to and then followed and then it describes the action verbs, research and describe. Content domain, common leisure activities of people in their community, language domain, using short memorized phrases and sentences. If we put this SLO on our project blueprint under content knowledge, it would say research and describe common leisure activities. Under language, knowledge, and skills, it will say use short memorized phrases and sentences to describe leisure activities in written and oral communication form. We need to make our SLOs measurable. How to make our SLO measurable? Think about using action verbs. These are some of the examples of action verbs. If you want students to be able to translate then you probably want to use some translation task. If you want students to be able to reflect, you want to use the reflection tasks in your lessons and, or in your projects. Therefore, using action verbs, making the assessment so much easier because they already direct us the kind of activities that we can use in our assessment. In addition to make SLOs measurable, we have to make our SLOs meaningful. One way to make it meaningful is to think about the real-world tasks that students need to engage in that is significant, that is driving and challenging, engage their 21st century skills, encouraging their in-depth inquiry, and is impactful to the world. Let's take a look at this project. This is a project at University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, the upper-level Chinese students are recruited by Hawaii Airlines to, uh, in a service learning project to serve as interns to help Chinese customers uh, in terms of translation and helping them with their needs. One of, if you analyze the tasks that the interns has to engage in the real world setting, we have to think about, okay, learners not only have to know the names, the regulations, and, and rules, they have to communicate, they have to help problem solving. Therefore, one of the outcomes can be critical thinking. In this example, uh, it says students need to be able to examine business situation and apply airline industry rules and regulations to provide professional problem solving solutions to customers, supervisors, coworkers. Then think about what language skills are needed to fulfill this need. 
Some of the skills are listed here. Ask questions, explain policies, procedures, alternative solutions, clarify ambiguities, propose solutions using socially appropriate, polite, and professional language. So it is through thinking about the task that students have to immerse themselves in to help us to be more concrete in our outcome development and more meaningful. Second, we have to think about the learners' cognitive and the linguistic development. If we're giving learners of basic language ability a very complex task, they may be frustrated. But that, doesn't, that shouldn't prevent us from giving our students intellectually challenging tasks. It only means that we have to scaffold our learners to perform simpler tasks and step by step to perform more complex tasks. Another thing to, a strategy to consider is to make our SLOs align with national standards and establish uh, evaluation criteria. This is very important because national standard and well accepted and established evaluation criteria were often developed by hundreds if not thousands of educators. That means these are the standards and uh, criteria accepted by by the public or by the education world. Having your SLOs align with these standards and education criteria would better help students to be equipped to meet the education expectations of the society. One of the most commonly used the, um, standards in language education is World Readiness Standards for Learning Languages. And you can access these standards by uh, the links that I'm going to provide in more to consider. They're also going to publish a book for different languages. Um, I think it's going to come out soon, so you can check out the link that I provided. Let's take a look at an example of alignment. In this, uh, just now, we talk about this uh, airline internship project, and this is the same outcome we just talked about. This language skill outcome is aligned with the uh, world readiness standards in terms of communication and connections. It is easy to understand it's aligned with communication, but it is also aligned with connection standard because the standard says learners build, reinforce, and expand their knowledge of other disciplines, and in our case, that's the uh, airline industry discipline while using the language to develop critical thinking and to solve problems creatively. Because our students have to put different puzzles together, communicating between the industry knowledge and their, their co-workers' workplace culture to help customers to solve the problem. So that's why it's connected with both communication and connection standards. In addition, we have to think about how our outcomes are connected with 21st century skills. A very important resource is 20th century, 21st century skills map. In this map, um, it provides how um, language education, what kind of tasks that language educators can use to foster different 21st century skills. In our example, our outcome are aligned with information media and technology skills standard specifically the communication standard and the critical thinking and the problem solving standard. Last but not least, if you're working in higher education, you may be very familiar with VALID rubric, which stands for Valid Assessment of Learning in Undergraduate Education. Value, there are a set of 16 rubrics developed by hundreds of higher education educators. Many of them are aligned with 21st century skills, such as critical thinking, information literacy, and etc. In those rubrics, it describes the criteria or expectations of performance at different levels. So we can think about how does our outcome contribute or help students to reach the highest level of performance. Let me give you an example. In teamwork, the highest level of performance of one of the criteria says engage team member in ways that facilitate their contributions to meetings by both constructively building upon or synthesizing the contributions and so on. So engage team members constructively constructively building upon or synthesizing the contributions 
are very good words for us to think about when we develop our outcomes. And this is a very good evaluation criteria to see whether we achieved outcome uh, for students to be able to collaborate or to engage in teamwork. Let me summarize this uh, short video. So we talk about two topics. First, we talk about backward design. It has three steps. And the backward design should always start with defining the learning outcomes or learning goals. After that, we'll think about assessment tasks and then learning activities. We talk about SLOs, what they are, and how to make it measurable, which is best strategy is to use action verbs. To make SLOs meaningful, we think about the real world tasks that students have to engage in. Think about learning, learners' developmental stages, and then how to align our SLOs with national standards and the well-accepted and established evaluation criteria. And that's the end of this video.